This is in depth. Tonight, a heartbreaking story and crisis right here at home. It's an insidious crime that has taken root in the tri-state and shows no sign of going away. It is fentanyl. 15 overdoses now in Henderson and Henderson County and four deaths since January 1st. Joining me tonight is Henderson Mayor Brad Staten and Henderson Police Chief uh, Sean McKinney. First, the numbers are obviously very concerning. I'm going to throw this one at you, uh, Chief, first. Why is it happening now and where is it coming from? Yes, uh, fentanyl's not new to our area, but uh, we believe at this point in time there is a composition in the drug that's in our community that's obviously at a toxic level and uh, we think that's causing some of the spikes in the overdoses and unfortunately in the deaths. And Mary, it's your community to lead. All generations are impacted by this. But you say the community outside of law enforcement is trying to do something about this. In what way? Well, it it's really starts with law enforcement. Uh, the way that we are able to take care of and listen to our local police force is very, very important. Uh, for example, our, our chief and I, we talk a lot, yes. uh, two or three times a week. And one of the things that he's brought to my attention is that we do not currently have a victim's advocate on the force. They are being asked to do more and more things along the lines of mental health. And one of the things he would like to see is maybe the addition of a victim's advocate that could help with situations like this and help with the mental illness as uh, uh, aspect and help with the, uh, the drug overdoses and... Uh, other things like that. And we were talking about the fact that, you know, law enforcement uh, chief has been put into a role uh, of having to handle mental health issues. Once uh, the people who are uh, arrested, many of them are addicts, end up behind bars. Are you adequately or is law enforcement adequately prepared to do that right now? When I say that, not only here in Henderson County, but throughout this region. Yes, uh, that is a fact, what you just stated, Brad. Uh, we really rely on our partners in the community uh, when people come out of, of the, the jail system for uh, counseling and treatments of such, because it really does put us in a bind. Uh, we can only be stretched so far, but we are happy to facilitate any point uh, in their recovery that we can. And there was an arrest made today, but that, uh, I've been reporting all these years, I often hear law enforcement, and rightfully so, say, you know, we're really putting a dent on this now. Um, there's going to have to be so much more done, though, than just picking up one person connected to all this. Absolutely. We, uh, we are going through every case with a fine-tooth comb. And right now, it's our number one focus. We've added manpower to our uh, drug task force with the Henderson County Sheriff's Office and the Kentucky State Police. And we're going to hit it with everything we have. And hopefully, there will be more arrests in the future. And, and Mayor, this, is, uh, this has to affect you emotionally. It's your community. You know a lot of these folks. And, and we are talking about people who, you know, it's a two-way street. You have dealers who secretly lace these drugs sometimes and the people who take these drugs have no idea they're laced with fentanyl. Uh, how is that affecting you as a community leader when you when you talk to your kids, when you talk to uh, the generations of people who are impacted by this? Well, I'm going to answer that in two parts. So as a community leader, we're very fortunate that we have a number of people throughout the community people at our addiction recovery centers, people like the Commonwealth attorney or our county attorney, wonderful partners in our community who really help make it so that one person doesn't have to shoulder that burden. When you talk about the kids, I'm a father. I have a 12-year-old girl and an eight-year-old boy, and I've talked to my 12-year-old about drugs, <clears throat> and she's in seventh grade at middle school, and never did I think until recently that it was necessary to talk to my son at such an early age. Mm -hmm. But now that I'm hearing some of the things that are going on in our community and how things are hitting younger and younger, I've started talking to him about drugs as well. And it, it really does hit home emotionally as a, as a father and as a community leader. And Chief, we talk a lot about Narcan, of course. Yes. It's not a miracle, though. It, it, can, it can save lives. Yes. But there are situations, it's all the timing of when it's administered and how it's administered. 
Exactly. Uh, we tout Narcan as being an, uh, a way to effectively reverse the side effects of opioids. But what I want to caution everyone tonight is that the, Narcan doesn't work every time. So it's not a 100% fail safe. So I don't want anyone in our community to have a false sense of security that just because we are able to get or we have Narcan that we're safe to do whatever drugs we want because it's simply not true. Mayor, 17 deaths last year in Henderson and Henderson County. Um, that's too high and obviously you're concerned. But we're on pace right now. If We've had four deaths now in just uh, the first half of this month. That puts us on a very, very serious and troubling cycle. It does. In, in Henderson, one death is too many. And to think 17 last year and then four this year, that the pace you're talking about that puts us on pace for over 100 this year, and that's just not acceptable. And that's why you see people from all over the community coming out and being a part of this effort. You know, you've got people at the Warm Center, for example, who are going to be adding an aftercare specialist, an aftercare case manager, so that people who go through things like the ANGEL initiative or the ANGEL program at our local police department have the care that they need and the support and the accountability that they need for after they get out of whatever type of treatment program is determined that's going to be best for them. And very briefly, Chief, uh, your officers, all first responders, they are putting themselves at risk often when they are walking into these. I mean, you never know what you're going to walk into, but uh, this just isn't a quick arrest. Uh, somebody is uh, possibly dying, and they have to put their lives at times at risk to save them. Absolutely. Uh, it's a dangerous situation for everyone involved, and especially first responders. Uh, the thing with the fentanyl that we're seeing is it takes so many different forms. You just can't walk into a, a house, a residence, or a restroom and identify it. So you have to take precautions and make sure that uh, we ourselves don't become a victim. And you said all different forms, different colors. Absolutely. They're, it's in pill form. It can be yellow, blue, pink. Uh, the pills normally have the markings of M30 on it. Uh, I've been told by my detectives now that uh, there's a lot of powder form that can be blue, it can be gray, it can be white, it can be tan. So it's, it's somewhat of a chameleon and you just don't know what it is or what it's in at this point. Well, Mayor Brad Staten and Chief Sean McKinney, uh, the door here is always open if you want to come and if there's new developments um, concerning this, what's turning into a crisis here in this part of uh, uh, the Midwest, uh, feel free to knock on our door, okay? Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for you, having dear. us. Thank you very much for your perspective. You're watching Eyewitness News at 9. We'll be right back.